the peak of covid my business was shut we didn't have revenues for almost 6 months not a penny of collection we had some 50 plus people to be paid off i borrowed shifted homes furnished it so well bought a brand new car 3 4 months life took it's how we feel because an entrepreneur's only investment is a self belief nothing else what else is there money is a piece of illusion if i give you 10 million dollars you can buy a villa in palm jumeira you could put that money in your own business you never know what's going to happen it can vanish what cannot vanish is your own belief which you carry with you wherever you go that was a huge realization people say time is currency energy is currency and the beauty of energy is it's unlimited you can just suck it up from the ambience around you just have to have the right ambience for it yeah and it's well within you it's between the two years that you have the propensity to get the energy for you don't need to go anywhere else certain things and all is experiential what a human mind can do when it believes in itself and puts the energy in the right direction it's unthinkable attention plus intention is transformation Ladies and gentlemen, Earthlings and Martians, welcome back to another episode of the My First Business podcast where I find mentors for my business and put them behind a mic. Each conversation is designed for you, my dear listener, and myself to help us improve our businesses and feel a little less lonely on this turbulent journey. I guess for this conversation is Divakar Vijaya Sarathi. Now, what I loved about Divakar the most is that I can safely say he is on another level, and I mean just another level of consciousness, and not in a way that is airy fairy his feet are firmly planted on the ground yet his brain processes things from the view of a satellite orbiting the earth the man has an ability to cut through the real truth behind a variety of subjects it was just plain beautiful to see his thoughts dance between the micro and the macro of not just running businesses but also about living on this giant rock hurtling through space that we call earth so Who is Divakar? An ex-banker turned entrepreneur, Divakar founded DVS Advisory Group in 2007 after leaving what was at the time one of the best paying jobs in India because he just thought it was draining his curiosity. DVS Advisory designs tax structures for entrepreneurs, SMEs and funded startups to enter India, expand globally from India or exit with zero penalties and 100% clarity. Devaker says his business is his laboratory. He uses it to ideate, experiment and build new products, services and models. Interestingly, he views tax policy as a liberating tool for growth which relies on deep understanding of demography, psychology and behavioral economics. So, art, science and numbers all wrapped neatly into one package. And you've probably seen him around. He's a Forbes advisor, has over 500 media publication, and is also the author of 15 plus books on direct and international taxation. In this episode, here are all the topics Devaker and I talked about. We talked about thought capitalism and the difference between perceived and actual reality, how to predict a country's tax laws by just observing their traffic jams, what's happening in India right now and why everyone should pay attention. almost experiencing bankruptcy twice and how buying a mercedes can change things around for you why poverty is possibly just a state of mind and how energy is currency the compounding effect of intention keeping the main thing the main thing working with your spouse and so much more. I can safely say this was a life altering podcast for me. I had goosebumps throughout the entire conversation and a few awakening moments as I listened to it again. And I think it'll happen to you as well. I hope you enjoyed the episode as much as I did. Without much further ado, here's Devaker on the EO series of the My First Business podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Entrepreneurs Organization or EO for short. Since its inception in 1987, EO has evolved into a vibrant global network now boasting 17,000 members across 60 plus countries. Now, just in the UAE where they've been active since 97, it's especially impressive. They're approaching 150 members representing an average revenue of $120 million and a combined workforce of 31,000 employees across diverse industries like technology, healthcare, 
healthcare, logistics, real estate, jewelry, media services, beauty, food and beverage, and I really could go on and on. EO strength lies in the support and the opportunities it provides. As an entrepreneur, I understand how solitary this path can be. And that's where EO UAE comes in, offering these invaluable resources through its robust calendar of events, workshops, networking opportunities, and a mentorship program that pairs you with seasoned business leaders. So if you're a business owner in search of a supportive community, rich with networking and structured support through accountability groups and mentors, then EO might be just what you need. Curious about EO? Stay tuned for interviews with EO members on this podcast, including today's guests, just so that you can get a sneak peek of what's in store. For more information and to apply, check out the link in the show notes. Bakar, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Malik. Glad to have you here. Uh, There's so many places that we can take this conversation. I was telling you before we started recording that the Venn diagram of our interests is quite large. That's a good thing. But uh, the bad thing is picking where to start because there's so much we can talk about. So I think I I have a start. This might be a good place. Let's begin with the C letter word. Okay. Capitalism. So you've, I've read somewhere in your bio and there's two kinds of capitalism, I guess. Uh, you've mentioned you're a believer in thought capitalism. Uh, what does that mean, thought capitalism? I mean, now let's get to the thought part of it later, but let's get to the, the yeah. latter part of the phrase, capitalism. Yeah. I mean, in my knowledge, capitalism is creating currency out of illusion. Mm-hmm. See, at the deepest level, you make people believe that what the regulators print has value. At some point in time, uh, it was picked to the gold. There was some tangible connection. But today we don't even have that. And then they use jargons like public debt, debt to GDP, sovereign debt. But for a nation which does not have foreign currency debt, all these just doesn't make sense. And I'm not getting into that. That's a modern monetary theory. But mm-hmm. So capitalism is ultimately creating um, currency out of illusion. Mm. And thought capitalism is seeing through it. Mm. Uh, you would start seeing, I mean, that's what people probably, you might call it insights. But at the end of the day, when you see through, cut the clutter and see through it, you get a completely different perspective of the view of the world. Yeah. Well, if you cut into that, let's say your initial point about creating value out of nothing. So it's basically fiction. Like the monetary system that we currently rely on. Oh, absolutely. It's a, it's a story we tell each other. It's a story we tell each other. It's an inevitable story we tell each other because mm-hmm. mankind loves fiction. Mm-hmm. Mankind believes in fiction. And mankind becomes what it believes. Yeah. Have you read Sapiens? Very much. Yeah. So this is like giving me, I've tried to read it. It took me a year and a half to read the book because there are so many truths like this in there that you can't just, you have to put the book down for like a week to let it digest in your own system. Absolutely. And uh, he was mentioning in there something, something similar and haven't been in the part of the currency world for a good part of my career and seeing through it. Like I tried to do my CFA. I got up to level two, I uh, got a degree in finance, worked in the currency markets. And I wouldn't call it a sham because the system works somehow. Uh, but at the same time, it is... Does it work? Not for everyone. We've had 80 to 100 instances of hyperinflation in the last century. It's true. If the currency system works... Why would you have runs? Yeah, it is by far the most volatile oh, market um, known to man. And uh, we so when when we'd advise hedging for clients, right? Everyone thinks you have a crystal ball because you're the one selling the financial True. products. So what do you think the dollar is going to do? I said, whatever you believe it, or whatever the the mass population believes True. it will do. But yet we'd have to report, you know, on those Monday morning, Tuesday morning numbers that come out, labor unemployment rate is this much, that moved the dollar, oh really? And then housing index fell, so that moved the dollar. Okay, which one? 
And then you look at all the factors. And I remember doing a presentation once and I listed, started listing on a slide. There was these group of CFOs from the logistics industry and they'd invited me over for a lecture. And it was, I started listing all the things that affect the currency market. Mm. The slide fully filled up. And I told them, I'm just getting started. Mm. <laughs> because anything you say will affect the currency Absolutely. markets. And uh, But for someone like me who's, grown up after we uh, got off the gold system, it, uh, you all still believe it and believe it to be true. If there is something you See, would, you would tell people. the gold system, yeah. if you were to go back and read the excerpts of FDR Roosevelt mm -hmm. on how the, the dollar was pegged to the gold, one morning he was in his pajamas. <laughs> and he, this is true. <laughs> this is quoted what I'm saying. Yeah. He woke up and said, I like the number seven. And three, so let's increase the dollar to gold exchange by 21 pen cents. And the exchange rate changed. Yeah. That's how arbitrary the system was, is, and will continue to be. Yeah. If we ever try to make sense, it's like imagine, it's like saying when a child will cry and when a child will be smiling, we would never, ever get it right. If yeah. at all it happens, it's a sheer s sense of coincidence, nothing else. Yeah. Have you, have you read any Naseem Taleb? Very much. So he talks about the more you try to control a volatile system, True. the more volatile it gets. Um, this can be applied to industries, personal health, whatever else it is. You, the more you try to put things into neat True. boxes that are not meant to be Absolutely. neat boxes, um, or even putting like wild animals in cages, like you get these consequences. And he's made a living out of that, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing this truth that the more you try to like put... Ooh the Federal Reserve to do X, Y, Z, this, there's going to be something that... Oh, it's all make-believe. Yeah. And the unfortunate reality is we all want it. Mm. We might say, okay, this is all sham, blah, 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 mm -hmm. all those, but we want it. Human beings want something to feel, well, what are religions? Yeah. What is the idea of a nation? Yeah. And yeah. I mean, we can keep extending this argument to eternity, but at the end yeah. of the day, mankind loves a story. Mm -hmm. It wants to believe in the story and become the story. Yeah. I think that's the universal truth at the end of the day, you might feel. Well. Do you remember, it probably wasn't a moment, it was probably a series of moments, but when your, let's say your eyes opened up to the truth, and if someone who's listening is kind of understanding what we're talking about, or if they're... Get it. They kind of get it, but what tipped you over into realizing or thinking about how this is just perceived reality versus actual reality do you remember like a, a turning point for you see i wouldn't say it's a turning point but it was a restlessness which got fed over a period of time mm -hmm. uh, right from my childhood uh, i used to wonder uh, why some people are poor why some people are rich and why people work much much more and still stay where they are and why certain people make the right moves and stay on top and when I was working in, when, when I was in employment, uh, one of my, my longest serving 10 years was with Kotak Mahindra Bank. I was for 13 months there. <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> so long. <laughs> I shifted four jobs in two years. So mm. two, two, two years plus. So yeah. Uh, then in Citibank, where I had a chance, both in Kotak and City, I had a chance to meet a lot of entrepreneurs. My curiosity only became, because I was in the lending space, mm -hmm. doing risk management. So whom to lend, whom not to lend. And the, at that time, the the financial papers in India were not reliable. So we had to assess the real cash flows of the entrepreneur and fund them on that basis. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was only feeding my curiosity, but not giving me the right answers. And I quit. I started on my own. Mm -hmm. I went to Mauritius for a transaction. And when I saw in Mauritius was 10 by 10 offices doing millions of dollars of business. And even if you were to do hundred, two hundred thousand dollars of business back in India, it was a big number. Why? And then I got into my PhD in IIT in India. Mm. I, I wrote the entrance exam when I was in my mid thirties. Mm. I just had few questions to answer, to, to be answered. How the economy works? Mm -hmm. Why gold standard? Mm. Why not some other metal? Mm. And why no gold standard today? Mm. 
there was no textbooks which gave this answer and then i dived deeper into political economy i realized economy economics on its own neither has feet nor brains when you mix it with politics and psychology mm. the entire picture pans out so then deep dived into how the human psyche works the theories of economics but the larger interest was politics the political economy the interplay between politics economy and psychology and when you put that as one puzzle bring them together i was refusing to believe that beneath all this just lay one word illusion mm-hmm. i so wanted to be proved wrong but it all came there it all ended there and that illusion is a function of how we are all hardwired and this was a journey i mean it took a couple of decades to realize this and a phd <laughs> i didn't I, i quit academia the moment really? I, i finished my course book yeah 35 to 37 i went and stayed sat in classes amongst young kids yeah just to know how the system works then when it came to dissertation I mean, I've, i've already read, published at that time about 10 books by that on yeah. tax and internet i still went and sat in the classes just to know if there is something new i would learn in the academy uh, in terms of how they might take me deeper but the answer was not there the answer mm. was elsewhere that's when i started traveling seeing the world yeah so today by seeing the traffic jams uh we can predict the tax laws to 70 to 75 percent accuracy wait what If, by yes. seeing the traffic jams traffic jams how does that work okay now let's say uh, i tried that out recently in sri lanka mm. checked it i mean across more than a dozen countries yeah let's say you stand in a traffic jam and the signal is red and the population is and those who are standing on the stop line are standing ahead of the stop line and they are like waiting to you know zip off mm-hmm. the moment it becomes so no one respects a stop line people are like i mean you can visualize yeah. most of the developing countries there. yeah so when that happens it's a sign that people have more cortisol in their blood mm. which means their anxiety levels are high mm. which means the income levels are low mm. which means the per capita gdp of the nation will be low the tax to gdp for the nation will be low the tax base will be low mm. corruption will be high mm. tax rates will be high the bureaucratic system will be high friction bureaucracy and then you would have the government alignment with the bureaucracy will be in two different directions i mean this, this is, is so true for developing countries now that you're saying it that's how it is that's exactly yeah. how it is yeah the same thing you go to an orderly state where people respect even if the next line is empty they all stay in one row they stay in mm. front of the stop line which means there's a great social security system Mm. which means the tax rates will be high that's why the anxiety levels are low because you know the state takes care of me mm. tax rates will be high the compliance rates will be high tax base will be high tax to gdp will be high the gdp per capita will be high mm. this templates works globally it does now that you're saying it the like drawing sense, that right? link for that chain seriously yeah you don't need to go anywhere just look at the traffic jams you will see it why yeah. across countries neighborhoods within the same society the behavior in a high income neighborhood and a low income neighborhood will be so different mm. i mean you go to little india or china town in singapore mm-hmm. and you are in raffles place in singapore you would see a very different behavior yeah right the same thing in new york city where you're in the city or in the bronx you would have a very different uh, yeah uh, exposure you come to india you you are in of course where it's over populated you will yeah. not have this kind of an uh, diaspora because you go to mumbai you have dharavi right next to the mumbai international airport or the sahar five star hotel so mm. india is a paradox to make but by and large this yeah. works there's also an element of uh, trust amongst each other as i don't know if it fits within that chain but when you're talking about these people on the traffic light revving up there's also with the cortisol maybe a need to be smarter than the other person to be faster and, and ahead and we see these people making decisions that could be called shortcuts or side alleys 
and that stems from a natural distrust of everyone else because more than a trust malik i would say they want wins in life mm is a human beings mm. innately we need wins mm-hmm. why do you think in the in the world it's global statistics yeah politicians who craved for peace have been shot mm these are the politicians who are war mongers yeah we don't need to go too far from here for examples mm mm-hmm. because human being innately as a race we we want to fight yeah. we want to win yeah right and when someone is at the lower end of the food chain they'll take any he win he doesn't have opportunities to win yeah that's true we all have other play arenas to fight and win yeah. where will he for him the poor guy for him the road is the only place where he can win yeah they would rather take a, a wrong direction in a one way just to save 3 seconds and feel happy about feel it feel happy about it feel proud about proud it proud about right? it right yeah. and that's where he gets to win yeah i remember cuz like i was in uh, pakistan 2 th- months ago and uh, my parents live there and they have a driver to help them out and i just get a call from the police station like your driver is here you have to come pick him up and mm-hmm. that's exactly what he did he drove in a one way exactly the other way just and i asked him like you saved 5 seconds maybe why why were you doing it he's uh-huh. like because no one has caught me yet exactly <laughs> you know you feel smart about it yeah it's like you know it hasn't happened like it's that um, like nasim talab makes that analogy of a turkey like a turkey for 364 days in the year uh. it it thinks <laughs> life is good when sun comes out True. i get fed but on the 365th day especially in the us you know life is gone but like you know until then the turkey is very happy exactly so there's a lot of turkey problem in like I don't think he will behave even after that, right? Even after that conditioning from no. the police or fines no. or anything, they will find win somewhere else. He he would feel for him it's a moment of it's it's a defeat. Mm. That's it. That's how he looks at it. Okay, yeah. I got caught. That's fine. Yeah. See, unless he transcends orbits. Yeah. And makes the next level of orbit his own. Mm-hmm. Which is why you would see if you go back and see the history of surprise lotteries. Mm. People have been where they were within a matter of few years. Mm. if let's say there was a plumber who, who got a 10 million pound uh, it's, a, it's a very famous instance he, yeah plumbers who he got a 10 million pound uh, lottery win in the uk mm. in about 5 or 7 years he was back to doing what he was doing worse off because he he got fed yeah uh, prosperity for a brief while but dealing with prosperity is a different skill set yes right and that that needs to gradually be imbibed yeah so so which is why i mean again if you don't change your arenas your habits don't yeah. change because we're all like it or not we're all operating on a software oh absolutely which needs an upgrade every time yes yes and i've seen that seen it kind of with my dad for example he was he's not educated uh he didn't finish high school or equivalent of 10th grade and he to take care of his family at the age of 17 his father passed away he got on a ship from a random port and ended up in charger that was his wow. random story uh he got into a oil tanker of some sort or like a goods uh, goods tanker and um his friends just told him like there's this new opportunity and at that time risk taking was like i think that generation knew how to take risk properly oh, now so we're just very coddled right exactly uh, and there was no there's no turning back because there's yeah. no opportunity there and i think he saw the different software upgrades throughout yeah, his life true. going from uneducated to started to work in ac maintenance to seeing a lineup on the shore asking people why are you standing here they said we're having a job application for a job in the rig mm. randomly getting into there then they <clears throat> he improved his life dramatically from mm, that point mm, onwards mm, one mm, chance after mm, the other mm. and the way he raised me would never be Mm-hmm. the same as my cousins who are still back mm. home our software is so, so different. different yes right like my software tells me if i'm at a store i should behave in the line mm. i should take my place in the exactly. line exactly but exactly. that software is like yes. if you see an opening just go in exactly get get exactly. your get that's your what got him where he was right where yeah. he ended up being yeah true. like even learning how to use a knife and a fork is a software true. upgrade true uh, of and and it really depends on the opportunities that you get or you make for those upgrades exactly. um we i grew up in the uae mostly so the first 18 years of my life were here we are very uh sheltered people yes. this is a bubble here it's a complete bubble right yes. so when i first moved to canada when i was 18 to study there complete 
mind boggling experience right first time seeing homeless people ha uh, reality first, hits right <laughs> first time seeing ceos of bank taking a train uh, to go uh, to work uh, right or hearing about these stories and uh, you hear that kids that were you know 16 started getting jobs at mcdonald's mm-hmm. sleeping mm-hmm. in their car mm-hmm. and for me all of this went like what what lie have i been mm-hmm. <laughs> uh. have i been living right so as i told you i think we can talk for hours about all these subjects especially human behavior psychology how it ties to economies markets societal behavior and as you've mentioned eventually to tax rates um but let's let's switch topics for a bit um i want to talk about something that i must admit i don't have a great understanding of i haven't kept up with it but i'm sure my audience has some questions around india and the opportunities that india has to offer now um so can we talk about for a moment this whole movement on from india to the world and from the world to india as well like both ways um and help me understand maybe from your perspective from devious perspective like what what part are you playing in that so a, b- a brief like what's happening in india why is it, why should everyone pay attention uh, even if you're not indian see let's again take a couple of steps back and look at how nations evolve every the birth of every nation is a consequence of a civil war then you would see a con- a period of consolidation of power then you would see a period of prosperity where there are good institutions strong trustable institutions being you got the central banks the judiciary the entire e governance mm-hmm. and then you would see a period of excess where yes the the nation starts to make surplus that's a fourth stage and from there you move on to the fifth which is a period of inequality rising inequalities and from inequality you again get back to civil war that's the six stages of every mm-hmm. nation's evolution you go back and see the last 3000 years of history this is how this is the nation's evolutionary playbook mm. when you see that india is from 2 to 3 consolidation of power to strong institutions so what succeeds this phase is a period of prosperity mm. if you look at china china is 3 to 4 us is 4 to 5 or probably you can even say 5 to 6 so if not india where else mm. where there is a stable political system reliable judiciary system. of course it is slow but what's phenomenal is the amount of energy which is being put on e governance mm. e courts is unbelievable how let let me take my own industry of tax tax assessments are straight forward now it's unheard and if i mean i i feel bad no one highlights this mm-hmm. india is the only nation on scale on the planet where tax collection costs absolute costs i'm not even talking about inflation adjusted yeah absolute costs have come down and collection amounts have gone up thanks to gst wow it's unbelievable what has happened in the nation at that scale at that scale imagine uniting 30 different states with completely with 3000 different cultures speaking some 300 different languages yeah I, even we are more complex than eu here it's fascinating and now it's all on one platform and the government is making data sets available oh. you don't need to scrap the web to get data sets it's being openly published by the government they're saying Come we look. are giving you the data sets yeah. to expand and imagine you've got a population of probably 60 crore people which is roughly about 600 million people who are connected on the mobile mm-hmm. they are digitally banking they're mm-hmm. not just connected they are digitally banking where else on the planet would you have this mm-hmm. even the needle moving up by 1% just imagine the, the wealth which gets created yeah so to come back to your question of world looking at india and looking india looking at the world india is now looking at the world with a very different level of confidence mm. where we are saying we are here to build institutions for the next generation and you are seeing indian banks are now in the top 5 wealthiest banks in asia they're getting there indian it companies are sitting on i mean unimaginable amounts of cash reserves so they're going around the world buying Mm. the number of unicorns which are coming out of india mm. i mean it's insane 
even during a winter funding winter across the world india saw record fdi inflows so uh, la- last year uh, i was in a closed room interaction for about 20 or yp hours with mark mobius was that uh, he is the uh, he was a former chief of franklin Te- templeton okay and he's invested close to half a trillion dollars across the world i've known him famously when i was in my college or early ca days this man was known to be spending more time on aeroplanes than on land that was his life he used to go around the world literally investing money and he said the only bright spot on the planet today is india and there's no he lives out of dubai mm mm-hmm. and uh, this is what indians are building for the planet and why the planet earth is interested in india nowhere else can you multiply your wealth compared to india i think at this point the market opportunity there is phenomenal we've got a very young demography more mm-hmm. than young we've got a hungry demography mm-hmm. right and just imagine you've got age you've got hunger and most important you've got rejection we don't want to live, we despise where we are today mm. that rejection is by far the most powerful human emotion which is driven extraordinary successes you have no shortage of rejection back home yeah so a, a general discontent absolute on how you're viewed and we're not blaming world. anyone yeah we just want to find solutions for that and that's actually I mean, our own prime minister modi for example he wasn't happy being a tea seller son which is why he became who he is today mm-hmm. so and as a nation the kind of self confidence we have today we have never had in the past yeah, yeah. i've seen it evolve I've seen multiple stages of various challenges right from 1990s when we physically had to go pledge gold to where we are today yeah i mean we've come a long way come on i mean there was a time way. where the brain drain was happening right oh, the absolutely. smartest were just leaving leaving yes. leaving leaving yes. one direction only not even bringing back any fdi or yes starting new families yes. new lives yes. and everything and now i don't think there's the same hunger to go no. like no. this is our land we can do what we want over exactly. here as well exactly and that's been the major shift for me when i'm growing up i'm 37 years old and i've what I, what i've seen through osmosis is that big shift oh, that absolutely. brain drain is not necessary anymore oh, it's it's coming back now yeah so many american uh indians are getting back to india mhm see malik you, you you look at if you were a smart cookie you would know where the opportunity lies mhm you don't need to go too far you just understand the status of nations just look at the central bank's balance sheet just look at the political system Mm. I mean that itself the strength of the fact that it's a large thriving democracy mm-hmm. a competent one absolutely yeah. where the supreme court has put even the ruling politicians behind bars it's not only about the opposition mm-hmm. that happens everywhere in the world mm-hmm. even the ruling politicians behind bars and an independent uh, and a military which is subservient to the civil government Mm-hmm. I mean these are I mean, when you, when you actually look back at how multiple nations are sorted these are real assets of a country mm-hmm. and that is and there is a difference between there is a lag between I mean in uh, business we say the lead indicators and lag indicators right lead indicators which come front and lag which follow mm-hmm. our lead has been the political stability mm-hmm. our lead has been the strength of the institutions mm-hmm. the lag is the economic prosperity yeah this is the result of yes the input yes yeah. and it's taken us 75 80 years i mean now people criticize nehru what there's no, everyone did what was right at that at particular that time. because nehru came back from the he had the baggage of east india company mm-hmm. entering the country as traders and colonizing the entire nation that's why he was so socialist yeah at that particular point in time what he did made sense mm mm-hmm. what m- it made the stepping stones for yes, what is possible yes we insulated today. ourselves See, when, when yeah. you when you are chaotic what you just you just get back home mm. shut all the doors and collect yourself that's yeah. what we did for the first 30 40 years mm. yes that had its own flip side you can't avoid it 
Yeah. Then Manmohan Singh came and liberated the country. He said mm. like we will open up the borders because we had to. That was a turning era for us. Yes, we mm. did have challenges with, with emergency with Indira Gandhi. Yes. But she's an amazing leader. All said and done for a woman to be on top doing what she did. Kudos to what she did. Yes. Mm. We all make mistakes. And post Manmohan's era, the last phase of his era is something which we could have done away with. Mm-hmm. But after Modi came on board. Again, this is the next third phase. If you were to look at India's regime, one was under Nehru, mm-hmm. what he did. Then Manmohan was only a finance minister. Mm-hmm. Narasimha Rao was the prime minister at that time. He was a scholar. Mm-hmm. He could speak 17 languages fluently. Mm-hmm. And the kind of vision they had and now the kind of vision Modi has for India. I think it's and and the best part is all each of these are institutionalized visions mm. no one reversed the policy of the earlier regime mm. they just evolved on that mm. right i mean that that's again in the dna itself of the nation yeah and where else will you have this and as much as we say it's a polarized every democracy is that's a narrative which everyone understands mm-hmm. i mean uh, if you look at the us it is uh it's always a fight between colors yeah <laughs> red right? and blue i mean in india it's a fight between faiths but you yeah. need a fight to polarize yeah that's how even democracies yeah so but otherwise we're one of the brightest spots on the planet yeah well, this it's it's amazing it's amazing to see it come through because there's just in that region you have contrast stories right so you it's almost unfair to compare a country in the 3 to 4 stage um in your cycle versus a 4 to 5 stage exactly. because different times absolutely but what you, what you can do is look at the region itself where everyone almost got around the same start the True. same resources the same um maybe different population but you know everyone had borrowed um what the people before you know the east india company mentioned 250 years they yes. ruled or something like that it's not a small amount we're not these countries have not been independent longer than the oh, rulers yes. past rulers have exactly we've lost the memory of independence here yeah exactly right so how, how do you take the same level and operate under um this long term vision while supporting who was before and not calling them names and true. saying like they messed it up and now we're here to fix it like that's not been the rally cry true true um and you see the differences like the experiment is in front of everyone it's a 75 year experiment true where it started as one thing and you can true. go and judge the results exactly although timelines for different things might be different and you know you've read 3000 years of history and everyone has their kind of time yes um uh, but you can see some leading indicators of where things are going to go for oh, other absolutely. countries in the regions and and stuff like that um and you based on based on this as well you are building you're taking this chance to build the answer to the big four um from india oh, right absolutely. which i think now now that you're talking about it, it seems like the perfect time to do that to shake shake up the the current status quo Hello everyone. I want to take a moment to share something that's really really close to my heart. As you know, this podcast isn't just a series of episodes. It's you and I getting mentored by the wisest of the wisest. Each episode is crafted with care, aiming to bring not just stories but wisdom and insight into the fascinating and sometimes lonely world of entrepreneurship. This is more than just a podcast. It's a personal mentorship session recorded on camera for all of us to learn and grow together. and this is where you come in if any episode has resonated with you your subscription or your vote means the world to me every subscription lights a fire inside of me and fuels me to keep delivering content that i wish had existed before i started this podcast 2 years ago so i humbly ask for your support please hit pause now and find that subscribe button on youtube spotify apple wherever you're listening to this it's a small action for you but it means everything to me thank you for being a part of this community and for your support and for choosing to walk this path with me stay curious and stay inspired thank you so much so in 2012 13 i started uh india's first online marketplace for professional services i said let's take on mm. it was like 2 years after this drama happened so i built an e-com platform mm. for the first time i had raised uh, i didn't even know 
funds without even having the name of my company registered i saw the power of the momentum of that's when flip cards were there mm. people didn't want to miss out on the e-commerce mm. boom and uh, yes we started uh, this platform called meteopro.com and we onboarded almost from being a speaker on all professional circuits i was putting up stalls outside all these and then telling cs boss this is the future you please yeah. come and join because if we don't productize our offering we don't structure ourselves we will be i mean we will be just pushed back to oblivion mm-hmm. and the size comparison was insane you had these larger international franchises who were like 100 to 300 million today they are much more than a multiple billions of dollars of revenue and you have on contrast indian firms doing few 100000 dollars of revenue mm-hmm. per annum a large indian firm would be doing 300000 dollars and the smallest of the big four would be probably about a billion dollar plus yeah i mean in your country in our country 300000 yeah. and a billion you, you can't even compare here yeah their electricity will will be more than the <laughs> entire top line here so the question was okay we did that but when i structured professional assignments into products mm-hmm. and made professionals come on court for the first time not only in india across the world professionals that this was the early year as a freelancer but you would never see a lawyer or an accountant publicly publishing their price anywhere mm-hmm. it happened on our platform 12 years back but when the clients came people vanished so we ended up executing as a at a price fixed by some x on competencies we did not even own mm. so that was it was a two year two and a half year experiment but great insights yeah so the real learning was if you need to scale you need to own the execution mm-hmm. so the next 10 years of my life was spent on that and then the larger question was about how should the organized entity be structured because it might be a very basic question should but that's the question which this industry is still not answered mm. if you see the big four it's a cluster of partnerships across the world network of partnerships partnership by itself is a dysfunctional way of existence mm. because you are there to share and not to build you build a company you don't you are in a partner you share lives you share the spoils you share the kill but you don't build an institution mm-hmm. look at the entire set of american institutions or any institution which is built successfully i mean take dubai for example mm-hmm. imar is a publicly listed company i mean your salik is a publicly listed company yeah you need to be a corporation to succeed on scale so we for the first time in our industry became a company which was organizing offering professional services i had mm-hmm. four or five franchises abroad i was experimenting yeah entirely without commercial interest i was experimenting mm-hmm. and now we are bringing we have brought them on board we have agreed on we have gone through the milestones required mm-hmm. last 10 years of experimentation five acquisitions we are on scale now Mm. we are on steroids we've got like the blessings of a quite a good number of uh, visionary indians behind us now mm-hmm. ready for the battle i love it i love it like this this is a this is a story i want to hear more often at least advice is a function of world view mm-hmm. perspective right so at that time we didn't even know opportunities existed beyond yes they did but we didn't know because the internet was not there mm-hmm. awareness was not there mm-hmm. access to business models was not there mm-hmm. today we do have yeah. we've got and i think this is a challenge which i'm trying to overcome in india where mm-hmm. you use the word advice is a function of our perspective right so yeah the, the first it phase, could be well meaning but it's it's a it's a well intention yeah, well intention yeah so, advice is i mean i keep saying this ray dalio's believability weighted people on your board so people with good ability and great intentions mm. one independent of the other is of no use great intentions without great ability or great ability without great mm. intentions is of no consequence yeah these two have to come together yeah so now i hope with the intent of putting india on the world map Mm-hmm. and the exposure of having seen the world yeah we are well positioned to 
make an impact. I think it's also inspirational, right? We we mentioned like your ad- advice being a function of your environment, let's say. Um growing up middle class, um true, we don't you don't have opportunities. So for example, there are certain subcultures like Sindhis, Gujaratis there to see business within their own communities. Oh, absolutely. So absolutely. from an early age they have that option. Uh, whether they choose to exercise the options up exactly. to them, but they have that option. But to other people there is no it's not even an option true right and in the absence of the option what stands in your way as your path in life not just career path but your path in life and everyone is starting to awaken for different reasons but i think what you're doing and what what's happening generally around uh the region is giving other people that extra option true like why not me Exactly. So I I started pretty late. Uh, we started our business 4 years ago. I was 37 now. So 33. Which is not a young age where you hear all these 21-year-olds become billionaires true, true. in a true capitalist society. But because they had that option. True. And it's visible because they their heroes. True. In that region of the world are the entrepreneurs too. True. Who were previously scientists. Mm. Uh, they're having breakthroughs in some way. Thomas Edison, mm. as much as he's a scientist, he's an entrepreneur. True. and so are anyone in the tech in the tech space they are like mark andreessen from mm. like uh, the netscape days mm. engineer but entrepreneur and those stories are out there and that gives people the option so i love what's happening in and around that region where you know my parents when i first told them i'm going into this like are you sure nice um this is just a hobby right like <laughs> just <laughs> try it out and you know no business does really well in one or two years True. especially a service based business right the overheads are low but you take time and you know we're cash flow positive but we're not super wealthy you get it so after after every, every two years we get a question so you want to continue this uh-huh. <laughs> you know i hear there's you know in, in that uh, firm they're offering this package and uh-huh. you know they'll pay for this uh-huh. and they'll pay for that uh-huh. but my reason for doing business is is not safety doesn't fall under one of those things so i think i'm more aligned with you is that i don't believe anything good can come out of being overly safe mm-hmm. in in different areas of life like innovation depends on you being reckless a little bit oh absolutely not right? a little bit and this can happen in sports so when i play football i try to do things that are not you're not supposed to do exactly because that's where the innovation and that True. can change the game a True. little bit right so the three reasons that i when i meditated and journaled about it and uh talk to myself about it why did i get into business and it became apparent afterwards but it was in no particular order it was one was freedom freedom of thought um which you can exercise mm. in your own environment mm. much mm. more than you can do in someone else's organization unless you're lucky enough to find someone mm. that has the same mental model as you uh freedom of thought and uh, freedom of time and um freedom of who to spend time with mm. Number 2 was money. So not first, mm-hmm. not last. Money is important. Oh, absolutely. The story that's oh, what seriously. It plays a part. And the last was creativity. Mm. Because it's a marketing agency, mm. we get to mm. exercise mm. our creativity in different ways. Mm. Like I I'm a bedroom musician and I want always want to keep art of some sort in my life. Mm. Mm. And mm. if I combine that into business and I thought to myself if if two or three of these are always ticking off, mm. I'm in a good place. So, so money, creativity, freedom. If I have money and freedom, and low creativity i'm fine mm. but the moment two of them switch off together mm. and i'm only left with mm. one it doesn't survive mm. freedom by itself will not do me any good Ooh. uh money by itself will not do me any good i know mm. that for a fact mm. and creativity by itself will also oh, not yes. so two out of, out of these three always need to be in play mm. like this podcast was born out of again the third one the creativity i need to inject some creativity mm. Mm. um have some of my working hours creating like mm, what we're producing mm, here mm, and i hope mm. people listen to this 20 years later True. and it's still relevant <laughs> um but uh let's talk about some bad stuff then let's talk about failures let's talk about failures next and pain they say pain is the best teacher oh yes and you've had your brushes with uh with going far yeah. far far down into that uh what what can i ask you what are some of your favorite failures in Fa- life or in business in business in life too why not no what if you okay if they're intertwined sometimes they are oh they are yeah see pain builds resilience right and uh, i firmly believe that pain leaves you when it finishes teaching you i think 
that's why over time you will actually start to enjoy pain because you are in the process of evolution every time you have some pain and yes i mean had a rough childhood that prepared a lot so my dad became blind when i was in my seventh standard so as was a riches to rag story we were thriving and he was an artist by profession and he had a series of health ailments over the next 17 15 17 years so life was really tough and i had to manage his art institution when i was in my 8th 8th 9th and 10th because we used to run three year programs i am a trained artist under him right from my childhood oh really so my granddad dad myself so we're all artists i got into this profession because he wanted to be safe mm. because when you are in that phase of mind where you've lost everything you at least wanted to ensure your kids have some insurance so that's why i got mm. into this but that taught me the power of discipline focus and he was the most cheerful person i've ever met in life imagine he had nothing in life he couldn't he had diabetes and he had a renal failure so his food was both without salt and sugar and he couldn't see the world mm. last 7 8 years of his life he was entirely bedridden but he was still alive only f- to ensure that i finish my uh, academia and i make a mark for myself and he died the day he's, he i had uh, earned a reputation on tax and he said now i know you are safe and the next day was no longer available so that built tremendous resilience where you are never lost until you give up i saw that in action i witnessed it so i don't need any any further validation or reinforcement of that belief in life so the concept of fear doesn't exist that is what taught me this entire my childhood taught me that don't don't fear anything because there's always a way out and in business yes i start can i ask you do you remember your last conversation with him oh absolutely very much so the day before he died i had got uh, of 5000 rupees from my I, I, i was in city bank i was i was insanely successful in employment i was an all india rank holder academically i got the highest placement in my campus in my ca no i was doing i was in employment only for him but i wanted him to feel safe and sec- secure so but i got 5000 bucks for my teaching tax because he felt i was so passionate about the subject and uh, i gave it to him that night and then uh, he just took that money and gave it back and he said like now i know you will make your mark he wasn't bothered about me earning in hundreds and thousands in my employment but he, he knew me as an independent person he said like this so i still have few notes from that so every time i open a new bank account in india I, my first note goes from that i still have it with me and then the soul felt comfortable its purpose of life was over so the next day he collapsed i was at office when i got to know this but that taught so much in life yeah because we never used to i've never been on a vacation since my fifth standard so only after my wedding i just i had a the entire childhood was either at home morning or at hospital it was pain all through but little did i realize it was not pain it was conditioning Right. Yeah. and uh, so in employment when in in business i just didn't bother about I, i quit jobs the moment i felt it was not you use the word freedom that's part of our yeah in our mission the first is freedom freedom to dream and go after our dreams that's like non negotiable in life so then um, as i got into business it was a partnership and in the second year of our business we had a contract from uh, one of the american firms to set up their back office accounting we hired people i was teaching so i was able to hire people we set up uh, at bought a home when i was working in city bank i was struggling to pay the the mortgages for that we converted that and my brother's home next to it into an office we did every damn thing 
Mm-hmm. I started business in 2007. And in September, Lehman Brothers collapsed, 2008. And in one email, they cancel our contracts. And we had to pay salaries for a serious number of people with three months notice because that was the recruitment. We had to have this business continuity plan mm-hmm. and all those things. And my partner sends me an email saying, I am getting back to employment. You will manage it yourself. And my marriage was one month down the line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> fun. Nice big omelette. <laughs> nice, nice fun, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yes, lived another day, survived, pushed to the brim in life, to the actual brim at that phase. Yeah. I have nothing my dad passed away 2 years before one and a half years before that so what would you do you either have an option to give up which was also on the cards or fight so oh, and what would he say obviously that's what that's where the inspiration came from moved back and then um, there was the first brush at bankruptcy mm mm-hmm. what i would tell everyone watching hearing this you should go through that <laughs> you know i saw a tweet once from naval ravikant i don't know if you follow him uh, but I, I, his book is next i still haven't read it but he he said in that tweet i hope you have your failures early oh seriously it's like i really wish for all entrepreneurs or anyone to have your failures early and um, i think about that a lot because like you when i first got into employment right out of university i was the only one of my friends that i knew that was making six figures in canada in my first job it was a sales slash trading role so commissions were pretty good and i by chance of luck ended up being good at sales i never even trained for sales it just happened to be mm-hmm. the case i'm an int- introvert so i didn't even predict that this was going to be the case and um it went really well at the start mm-hmm. so when my first like jolt came i wasn't ready for it i didn't have uh, past failures to teach me that resilience and it's like um it's like that lobster story have you heard of the lobster story no. so a lobster's shell is static in the sense that it doesn't grow the material mm, itself mm, doesn't mm, grow mm, mm, mm. but the meat the inside of the lobster keeps growing as okay. it as it ages so every once in a while the lobster outgrows its shell because it got it's got bigger huh. and at that time it has to shed it off Okay. When it sheds it off, it has to go into the depths of the ocean, oh. find a safe spot, oh, it's hide from lobby. predators it. because it's vulnerable. It's primed to be attacked and eaten completely, and it's not safe. And that is the toughest time for mm. the lobster when mm. it's growing its new shell. And that's that's the story I found for myself around the time when my first uh, painful exit from employment was. I'm the lobster. <laughs> I'm just growing mm. a new shell. I feel exposed. I feel cold. I feel uh, naked. Mm. And I just need time to grow that new shell and, you know, I I would agree with you when you say and for everyone like I hope you have your failures I early. Have miserable failures. Early. <laughs> yeah, go. But as long as you survive those failures. Yes, I mean you will survive. Mm. If you're alive, you survive. Mm. So the beautiful what doesn't kill you. makes mm-hmm. you stronger mm-hmm. that's it yeah see and from there on malik so after i got through that the second time was even more painful because i had kids mm. and uh, it was in 2016 one of my lending ventures went bust mm. and i was looking at it was like when when things go out of control right it's like a tailspin from mm. there i was walking on a monday morning at the beach tropical weather 10:30 am <laughs> literally looking at the marina beach and then seeing like what the hell i've got people at office i've got two young kids my wife so we need to feed them i call up the mercedes showroom and then i bought my first mercedes then gle I, i was so fascinated by the car when it got launched so i wanted mm. that i bought it at that time 3 mm-hmm. months life turned around and that's when i was able to actually i i've done that in the past also i i bought my first skoda super when i was not in a great spot 
just to feel good mm. but when this happened i realized what actually makes you is your own self belief mm. you, all your financial matrices all these are bs yaar when you are down and out splurge like you've never done before in life <laughs> you start to get that energy back and when you have the energy you are a force to reckon with mm i think that's something which i firmly believed the same thing i did in 20 20 in the peak of covid my business was shut we didn't have revenues for almost 6 months not a penny of collection we had some 50 plus people to be paid off i borrowed shifted homes bought a brought furnished it so well bought a brand new car 3 4 months life turned around it's funny how that happens right it's how we feel because an entrepreneur's only investment is a self belief nothing else fucking love that yeah what else is there money is a piece of illusion If I give you ten million dollars, you mm. could buy a villa in Palm Jumeirah. You could put that money in your own business. You never know what's going to happen. It can vanish. Mm. But what cannot vanish is your own belief, mm. which you carry with you wherever you go. That was a huge realization. You know, and as you say that, I remember uh, I was showing you the founder of the studio outside. So he used to be my boss at the previous venture he was working at. At that time when I was working for him, I lived in Sports City. This was my first 2 years into Dubai. I've only been here 5 years now. Um and he was living in the greens. Nice Imar community, you know, lush and everything with good surrounding and it just the place that makes you feel better. And I was in my moving phase and he's like you don't understand what moving the from the greens from sport city which was for the audience it's a junk town it's okay. uh it's a, it's completely deserted there's a, a ton of unfinished buildings that stare at you every day these are so unfinished they even remove the cranes no one's coming back for them Ooh. there's 10 stories it's like a ghost town okay even basically now. even now till today and waking up in that sport Ooh, that, city that even going for a walk all you see is unfinished buildings there are basically relics of the past of someone failed get it, here get it get it someone couldn't someone went bust in oh, yes. the 2010 market and they never came back and all they were supposed to build a canal all you see is just dug up <sighs> tunnel with no water in it so if you wake up and see that every day it's like you don't know what moving to a better place will do to you and he was absolutely fucking right 2 years after moving into that place we got to launch our own business because exactly. my morning walk was different yes because yes. the surrounding habits were different yes. because now I was doing grocery at a different uh, place exactly you know i was getting the my coffee from a different, different place yes you know it, the energy just completely changed and we're in that phase right now again we're living in a place which is not stimulating me true, and i think true. it is doing something to myself believe oh, absolutely what we don't realize is mm-hmm. your investment is not any uh, is not anywhere else it's filled within you and i keep saying this even to my kids people say time is currency mm. energy is currency and the beauty of energy is it's unlimited mm. you can just suck it up from the ambience around <laughs> you just have to have the right ambience for it yeah and it's well within you it's between the two years that you can you have the propensity to get the energy from mm-hmm. you don't need to go anywhere else mm. and believe me malik i mean certain things and all is experiential what a human mind can do when it believes in itself and puts the energy in the right direction it's unthinkable and in in quantum physics it's well i mean scientifically also if you were to look at it mm-hmm. attention plus intention is transformation tell me more Period. about that i'm not sure if i fully grasp that many a times you would have been in a circumstance where you so wanted something and the solution comes from nowhere yeah you would meet someone from absolutely nowhere it's because you are attracting we are all magnets mm. at the cosmic level each and every one of us is an energy magnet 
someone is prosperous successful he absorbs it he attracts it you must be imagine i say you are a very handsome person people have this tendency to just shy away from that mm. even to receive compliment it's an intentional act i have that problem i don't know how to receive compliment it is such an intentional activity mm. you get it right you, you are able to comprehend what i'm saying yeah everything in this planet is intentional yeah coincidence doesn't find place in life mm. if you are successful if you are doing what you wanted you wanted it you yeah. attracted it you focused on it transformation happens and you if i can add to that there's a compounding effect to your intentions too so i've had depressive phases in my life suffered with that the docs give me meds but i never took them because i just had this voice in me that take agency take control back i think you can try some things mm. and since then it's been a journey of trying a lot of things and each of them have their own improvements then i look at people that do suffer and this new mindset is coming to me very close to what you're saying how are you the cause of your situation absolutely and why does it keep repeatedly happening to true. you true whereas other people in the same situation are not experiencing that exactly and that has to do with the words in your own mind oh, absolutely. about your own story true. true the woe is me mere saath aisa hota hai like Seriously. i i don't know why Seriously. me all Seriously. over and over again and the moment i and it's the vakrit it's really challenging to remember your own positive self belief sometimes for someone with um, a weak weak brain which i'm working on i'm not i don't have weak brain don't even use that word here not using it but I find that even I can forget sometimes and then I need a nice lecture by sometimes by Osho or by sometimes by someone else I'll just go and find a lecture to rewire my my brain again but it's so true because the compounding that I'm talking about is especially for the negative cases I've seen it spirals it's a tailspin it spirals and at, at at some point it's you your words won't get through to anyone and they Seriously. have to do that inner work and uh, and find that voice within themselves absolutely and, and find that story it's it's fascinating what a human mind can do mm-hmm. and words have power never use a word inappropriate which could harm you mm. it will harm you mm. because your words reinforce your belief systems and what you believe you become mm. I mean, that's how we are there is no you can't say why that's a plant has chlorophyll it is green in color you can't argue why <laughs> chlorophyll is green in color <laughs> that's how human beings are yeah these are all universal truths yeah there's no point fighting just accept it and it's and it's fascinating what life can do yeah i mean abundance is everywhere yeah and one of my favorite lines is like evolution makes the impossible inevitable mm and evolution is nothing but understanding human truths yeah the the universal truths the more you start to move in that journey you have to want it bad enough right it's intentional everything yeah. see we are all magnets let's be very clear mm whether you drive a worn down toyota or a rolls royce mm. you drive it because you wanted it mm. if you keep cribbing you will have that mm. if you keep aiming high you will get that very simple the concept of sympathy doesn't find its place sympathy is i mean one reason one thing which i really like about rahul gandhi mm-hmm. though he brings i mean is not the right example to be used in multiple circumstances that mm-hmm. gentleman made a statement i keep telling my kids also that mm. poverty is a state of mind so true margaret and thatcher it ruff, ruffles feathers though when you he lost election for that statement mm. i mean you can't say that being a political leader of a mass of a, well, you of can't a, even say it to your own family right I mean, like poverty in terms of wealth or poverty in terms of mindset oh. both right I agree but at least within the within our own yeah kitten can your own kids and 
yeah family yes but just just look at it he's so and this is exactly what margaret thatcher said she said being poor is a mental disease and that's so true but unfortunately when you're poor your anxiety levels are high you don't have the steady state to absorb yeah what it takes yeah and those who break those barriers move on because they have the hunger they have the resilience yeah actually the poor are the best place to succeed huh? yeah they have all the weapons in their armory to succeed and they just need the right mentoring to break orbits yeah but that's what rahul gandhi said is so so real it's a state of mind yeah but that's why that's why humans love rags to riches stories because it's basically an admiration of the power of self belief oh, when we see this right and they see yeah they see like if that's possible then i potentially possible for me so when we're admiring successful people successful by any metric what we're admiring is not what they have is the journey that they took to get there uh dig unconsciously deeper, dig or, deeper on that what are you admiring the fact that they were able to control their intentions in a way that led them t- to their reality that is today so what does that mean to you it's possible so it gives you hope that's all mm we want hope mm-hmm. as a human race go back in history mm every political leader who succeeded or someone who gave hope mm i'll give you this is something um, it's getting into movies but yeah. if it makes sense so i come from tamil nadu mm. and we have two stars who've dominated the tamil movie industry i mean tamil nadu has a population of 70 million so it's not a <laughs> it's, it, it's it's a it's you you can say it's yeah. eu yeah for all means in terms of population <laughs> or slightly smaller than that yeah there was there is rajnikanth mm-hmm. who even at 70 gave a blockbuster mm-hmm. and there is kamala hassan mm-hmm. in terms of acting skill sets kamala is by far i mean he experiment he wows you he overwhelms you every time he's on screen mm-hmm. but you don't connect with that person rajni and kamal looks very really handsome even at this mm. age i mean the charisma is very different but rajni if you see all his films all the films which succeeded were again rags to riches underdog story he gives hope yeah the same population when rajni does a philosophical film fail him they don't they don't make it a success <laughs> so the population don't watch for rajini they watch for hope mm. they see themselves on the screen when he plays the guy who comes from the bottom and succeeds so as a race we love these stories rags to riches because we want hope in life and what does religions do any religion provide hope right Well, what's the need for hope in the first place what what do you think it is is it that as human beings on this planet sometimes it almost feels like the planet's out to kill us you get too much oxygen you die you get too little oxygen you die you get in the forest close to animals you die you don't get food you die you eat the wrong food you die and it feels like the whole life is out to kill you and the only way you can continue life is by having children and living through them mm. um so wh- where do you think this this need for hope even comes as a innate thing like why why do we why do you think we See, have it i think it's an existential need for harmony in society imagine if everyone in your neighborhood is paranoid how would the energy be mm. would human beings at all do anything creative progress happens yeah when you are not worried about the essentials and you are focused on if survival was your problem you mm. were a caveman waiting for the next queue of animals to come and eat you mm. the next tribe to come and fight you you would never have we would never have progressed as a race mm-hmm. so this is where i love chengiz khan i mean uh, his only goal was to bring in law rule of law to the mongol society 
and he said i am okay to kill even half the population if the remaining half can stay in peace and there is rule of law in my country mm. because his mom was kidnapped she he was a son of a destitute lady who was engaged to someone else and his wife was kidnapped by the person whose fiance Genghis Khan's father kidnapped <laughs> who effectively became his mom hmm so he, this man understood the pain of a lawless society i will bring in rule of law hmm and that's when the society started to thrive regardless of the cost of okay. lives and what is the cost anyway yeah. people were dying yeah just that the the death became the the cause of death became mm. uh, fructified as one man's uh whatever vision yeah but if you look at this we have currency thanks to the mongols when they took really? over the chinese the Ch- kubla khan when he he learned mm. how the chinese used currency and he made it is yes, this is a fantastic way of um keeping transacting yeah. with the yeah. economy let's do it across so the best part of mongols they never killed intellect mm. which ever territory they occupied they conquered they left the intellectuals there mm. even chengiz khan he promised a buddhist monk take my he gave when he was in prison he was taken by if i'm not wrong one of those uh the buddhist rulers of the time as a slave his own friend sold him as a slave owing to an issue of betrayal or whatever i'm not getting into that story he was put like a cage. he was living in a cage for years and he gave a small token to a buddhist uh priest and told him hand this over to my wife hmm. i promise you when i start conquering i will leave your monasteries the way they are i won't destroy the priest died he handed over the uh, the symbol to his wife so that she knows he's here he didn't do, he didn't do anything to the monastery and he learned everywhere he learned what what was the best of that culture and made that part of the entire mongol story see unfortunately we wouldn't know all this because the central asian the east asian the middle eastern cultures have all been wiped out mhm when 250 years when we were ruled our entire history was erased yeah we don't know what happened 2 3 000 years back in our own country yeah thanks to whatever 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 mm-hmm. let's not get to that yeah so shingis khan's promise was we getting back to your question of hope when people have hope that they can be safe look at what's happening to ua because we are do you even bother about locking your car no or even the house door i mean when our, our home when we moved to a new mansion in barsha our main door was not working we didn't even bother to rectify it for 3 months mm. we traveled all over the world the home no none of us were there yeah gives us hope so what happened look at the economy around it thrives right yeah hope is the fundamental investment in a society makes in its own people yeah. for it to thrive and flourish yeah and religion and religious institutions play a significant part in propagating that hope absolutely i think it it manifests in so many different ways one one phrase i use a lot in football and i've heard it from another friend who was playing with me when i play is guys next goal is ours mm. especially when we're down so mm. we're down four goals mm. it's 4-0 there's two kinds of people on the field one is a dejected i uh, can't wait for this game mm. to be over mm. there's no hope left and then there's the guy that says guys next goal is ours just get one exactly. make it 4-1 exactly make it 4-2 exactly make it 4-3 and you get to 4-3 guys do you believe we can win mm. you get mm. to 5-4 and that drives different kind of behaviors oh, right there absolutely. there'll always be a sulking kind absolutely. which you will not expect much from in the game true and true. you translate this game into business into society oh, into thing there's someone as you said the paranoid neighborhood like if everyone's feeling like if the whole fe- team felt de- dejected exactly. that 40 will be 80 very exactly. soon exactly and it happens time exactly. and time again exactly so you you don't even have to break them down with good skill you break their minds oh it's very true you just break their minds oh, and you yes. get your eight goals yes you Actually, make them feel worthless once you 
ruffle up the feathers opposite of your yeah. opponent you're in yeah that's and it alongside hope and the very important phenomenon i, I play tennis and paddle mm. so i experience the same thing especially when we play doubles in paddle mm. momentum yes momentum. momentum is the single biggest force of mankind's evolution and i've seen that time and again mm-hmm. when there is momentum you win Mm. game after game set after set yeah it's not about you you could be like five love yeah in tennis and it's okay to win a couple of lose a give up play easy a couple of games you will see your body language drooping and his body language gaining energy yeah. but when you go five love to six love you have not only won the set but the entire the next two sets yeah you you have crushed you your broken opponent. them yeah so momentum so yeah. hope is the seed for momentum yeah it begins it initiates momentum when the momentum gains speed it becomes an avalanche yeah there's the nothing stopping that happens yes absolute absolute Abs- man i can talk to you all day about this kind of stuff hello everyone i want to take a moment to share something that's really really close to my heart as you know this podcast isn't just a series of episodes it's you and i getting mentored by the wisest of the wisest each episode is crafted with care aiming to bring not just stories but wisdom and insight into the fascinating and sometimes lonely world of entrepreneurship this is more than just a podcast it's a personal mentorship session recorded on camera for all of us to learn and grow together and this is where you come in if any episode has resonated with you your subscription or your vote means the world to me every subscription lights a fire inside of me and fuels me to keep delivering content that i wish had existed before i started this podcast 2 years ago so i humbly ask for your support please hit pause now and find that subscribe button on youtube spotify apple wherever you're listening to this it's a small action for you but it means everything to me thank you for being a part of this community and for your support and for choosing to walk this path with me stay curious and stay inspired thank you so much well, there is something else that is on a crossover on our venn diagram working with your spouse oh lovely um so in my case alina is the original founder of the business she started it by herself one man show one woman show and she built it up to a place where quite profitable for a one woman person and um around the time that covid hit something you believed to before safety is an is an illusion so i always thought having a job is safety covid hits everyone's mental model change right having a job is no longer safety yeah. so i said if i'm going to be unsafe there <laughs> might as well do our own thing exactly and be be unsafe so i'm happy i i joined forces uh with her but uh we got a lot of pushback again from society for that so one pushback for doing business the other pushback for doing business with your own spouse did you face any of that when you guys started working <laughs> together um some of the concerns i heard from well wishers you're putting all your eggs in one basket or you're going to spend too much time together did you have i mean all the words you said right putting all your eggs in one basket yeah spending time to get too much time together it all sounds fear right it resonates the, the underlying emotion is fear mm. and i firmly believe that fear is killed more dreams than failures <laughs> so it finds no place in life it doesn't mean you act without caution two different things all together so when kavita and myself started uh, so she joined uh, both my life and business when we were 18 months old into the journey dvs started in march 2007 it's pretty early then sorry yes very of early course on. yeah and uh, what she all she was a lawyer very very competent lawyer she was working uh in india's number one tax law firm in delhi when she decided to marry me and she wanted to do mba as well so i asked her what do you want to learn by doing an mba he said i would learn to run a business might as well run and learn it that's why i convinced her to not study M- an mba which uh, i don't know I, i've never had this feel that you could learn business in a classroom mm. you could you could hone your skills but once you've been through the journey then it makes a bit more sense but otherwise learning 
sitting in a classroom looking at textbooks i mean textbooks will tell what has been done it's never going to talk about what can be done mm. right so uh i still do you still feel like that or was that for your thought i've, I've been through the entire journey i mean i've gone and studied in harvard and oxford chicago you name it i've been through that and all these ypo eo events even next month uh, in march i'm off to a a one week program where we are having ncr harvard and uh, mm. london business school coming together but i love the interactions the learning comes more from the peer group the kind of questions they ask so one thing after a stage of having been through business the cycles and you've built you've learned what it takes to get there then learning from others experiences will make sense yeah. because you are able to relate to it yeah. right i mean ultimately resonance matters in all yes. this right absolutely it's not academic knowledge you you can't say okay microsoft did this i'm going to do that 100% I mean. so she joined and the initial few years were tough because we had kids early and we didn't have the resources to you know have support staff and stuff like that at home so she i mean kudos to what she did highest respect because she was having to put up with both the kids and my madness at the same time <laughs> three kids <laughs> i keep telling her our business is a first child so four it was kids. four kids <laughs> i started 16 businesses in my life mm. the first 15 years of my life business mm. entrepreneurship so because i was searching i was not starting yeah. i was searching for certain answers i mean which came through later mm-hmm. but she had to put up with all that nonsense mm-hmm. and the best part what i learned is you can't get a better critic than your wife. Mm. No filters, straight to the point. She doesn't bother about what you care because others will have other biases or reasons to be not that direct with you. Mm. But she was like and she's a very articulate person. And I've always found women to be much more uh one detail oriented, mm-hmm. analytical. Uh and there are certain profiles which women really excel and sheer the the hard wiring we can't change right i mean that's why even in a pride the line and lioness have different roles to play mm-hmm. absolutely so it was tough for us because we used to the conversations used to be entirely office even at home mm-hmm. uh now it now to ensure the gap doesn't happen kids have also joined the party mm-hmm. so <laughs> my son and daughter are very much an integral part of our business as oh, well oh very cool I think it's it's not about work and life it's life yeah i know it's various activities of like the moment you start looking at it that way yeah makes so much of a difference i yeah i think i truly believe and i i hope i can say this cuz it's in my mind roughly but i think a business is an extension of your philosophy on life oh, absolutely. which is why i do it right it's not like it is the need to make money and have a career that i do business it's my expression of like these are my this is my internal software this is my philosophy it manifests itself exactly through the activities that exactly. i do that you can put the bucket of business in but for me it doesn't have to have that bucket it's just a series of activities uh, i do uh. to that are aligned with these values that i haven't fully explored and understood my own values but they're coming they I don't think it's academic, right? Values also comes from watching yourself. Oh, discovery. Yeah, and that discovery happens by you having proof of behavior. Oh. Right? The reflection. Yeah. So the do and then the reflect. Yes. So sometimes you do automatically and uh-huh. upon reflection you understand why you were hardwired exactly. to do that. Exactly. And is there going to be a repeat True. of that do because of the value and True. then you start collecting those values like oh absolutely i behave this 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 way yes and based on this the predictive power of where i will behave in the future gets better more than predictive malik i would say it's more about uh, realization hmm. knowing your what you can and cannot do that helps that at least uh, just resonating from what you just said i took a year hmm. off from life mm mm-hmm. from my active life just sat and wrote what all i did in the first 15 years of my business life i was only like just take a few calls a month mm. but only writing writing and 15th year published a fairly large book it was more meant for my grandkids and kids but it became an of- official document because my business was very much part of my life 
there, there were two things if you were to reflect what you did in terms of activities and how you decided in terms of circumstances and when you bring these two your activities would drive would reflect your interest and how you decide would reflect your values mm and when you codify that the outcome is a very very powerful piece of discovery makes life so clear absolutely clear mm. i mean i sincerely wish everyone be it in employment i mean more so for entrepreneurs because the problem for entrepreneurs which i have noticed is uh we tend to think that we are the solution for our challenges but our real focus has to be on identifying the challenge the right challenge that's the challenge solutions will come you need not be the and we are not the solution for, see there is a limitation in terms of ability and in time paucity of time and so we put this i think it's a it's a famous eu framework as well i know i don't know mm. so i know what i know i think that's your confidence i know what i don't know that's actually your weakness you know that i don't know what i know that's your potential i don't know what i don't know is your blind spot mm. so we need to be cognizant about our blind spot cognizant about your weakness focus on what you know and today there are a a series of mechanisms which are available psychometrics are advance like i mean i we use at work also principles mm. you ray dalio is one of my role models mm. ray dalio and adam grant built this we have something called as a talent warehouse talent warehouse, warehouse. so okay. every human being is uh, at at work including myself there is a, a a profiling and there is a detailed analysis of how we think work and decide and the roles and we put down the needs for that particular role and match these just because someone has done hr need not be that that person has to work in hr There's qualification and ability or the personality could be completely different mm-hmm. so this helps mapping and we have now reconciled significant i mean it took quite a good amount of time your experience age qualification none of it matters when it comes to absorbing information mm. what matters is who you are as a person and understanding the fundamental fact that human beings are wired so differently mm-hmm. it took decades to realize because that that's at the end of it so going back to our conversation of reflection on both our deeds and decisions is the ultimate discovery of truth for any person more so for an entrepreneur because we mm. tend to take too much on our plate mm-hmm. without actually knowing what we are competing you might have the intent as we went back intent and ability yeah do you have the ability your in your force can push you to some extent to learn yeah but not to execute because that requires consistent ability and that's where i'm stuck right now one of the places both elena and i as we make our 2024 plans the challenge becomes what's the main challenge to solve for the coming 12 18 24 24 months and because we're the bootstrap roll up the sleeve kind of thing we've not been very intentional in our first three years of business it's been That's a game of survive and start the new life the entrepreneur life take the risk but be in the game uh, as you know i keep bringing up nasim talab is a big hero of mine the job of a trader is to show up the next day true you don't take a position so large that you don't you completely blank out so this year when we started doing the planning we started doing a diff- few different frameworks so we made the uh impact versus effort chart okay here are the challenges we want to solve which one are high impact but require low effort do that first which one are high impact but high effort schedule them in which one are low impact mm. and mm-hmm. low effort mm-hmm. delegate and which one is low uh, uh low impact but high effort why do them so from what i see you're focusing on the priorities mm-hmm. are you focusing is ability also 
a factor in deciding delegation Each, versus execution self execution i haven't i haven't delved into that like i didn't know how to fix or judge that it went the way it works i was doing it was let's say these things showed up on these quadrants each of them would become a project got it like a, a smart I goal the, the priority was this yeah. uh, need to delegate but the ability no i haven't measured principlesu.com try Be- that because where i'm stuck is what you were mentioning there is that taking on too much that's a standard i realized it late in life i would really wish like every entrepreneur cuz that list this. of what we need to do yes. this year yes is yes. overwhelming us uh, right now can't agree and it's more. it's january 9th <laughs> and i'm already yes. completely overwhelmed yes. and yes. so is she so here again one very very important lesson i learned mm. and following it in the last 3 years tell me the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing <laughs> very simple <laughs> Yeah. And Stephen Covey's rule first things first. Second things never. <laughs> What is on top do that. Yeah. So I think an entrepreneur will make a lo- is, will make his journey m- a lot more potent. Yeah. When he understands his ability. We all look at the drive. Yes, that is a base fuel. But to sustain you should be cognizant of your own abilities mm. what you cannot this is st- strategy is knowing what not to do mm. that is at the heart of any strategy now this is a conversation this morning with alina is like the the most important thing for us to see her is going to be saying no to from things. a business standpoint yeah. saying no and doing also no yeah that stuff <laughs> what you need to do you should not do if you are not the right person to do mm it could be a very important act its output is going to be suboptimal yeah yeah right going to do a poor job at yes. it anyway yeah it can be as simple as cleaning the table mm. if we are not the best cleaner on the rolls we, we should no, even do it. be attempting it's not about i can do everything we all are equipped to do we can do but are we the best pe- persons to do mm. and is it the best use of your time is the second question mm. even if you have the ability you might have the ability to do five different things yeah but is doing all the five different things the best use of your time these are all questions we need to ask ourselves and that's where the role of a mentor comes into picture mm. and this is the kind of slaps to my face that i like in these podcasts and i hope you're getting a slap too my own <laughs> <laughs> no it's 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 absolutely true like i all have been through that phase malik i've been very guilty of this and i just have a general again i'm going to be careful with my words i don't want to compound myself into another no, one of don't these don't even see you are evolving yeah without having gone through this phase this words might not even make sense to you yeah right so there's a beautiful saying in yogic philosophy when the student is ready the teacher, teacher finds is. and teacher is not the person is not the messenger it is a message hmm. so the same book which you would have read 5 years back you know today when you read it will make a lot of difference because the reader is different mm-hmm. so you are ready now it's found its place into your mm-hmm. life it's as simple as yeah. that so never go back and rue the fact that i did it then no which is why you are here today mm. which is why you are able to absorb this so there's always a positive side to any everything in life and yeah. it's mandatory it's all an evolutionary process absolutely so, I, like that quote i remember is you never step in the same river twice which is um, you know to your point with books i feel this all the time there's the book has if for example an actual book has to find you at the right time oh absolutely because you know you, how many times have you come across this you had an absolutely life changing book you recommended it to someone they said what is this garbage exactly <laughs> right? it happens because they're not there ready exactly. for it or they're past that stage so for example if i read any uh, the psychology of money now for me that book is very basic B- but for someone who has not Just explored that starting over yes they're like wow this is uh, like you know changing my mind but you know it has to find you the lessons and the message has to come for you individually at the right time and and we just have to have you know that that patience of you know this thing about the ability is actually like creating brain waves about 
yeah. what I need to look at when I it's when I get so back. It's so powerful when you start looking at it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, pure intent cannot can only take you so much. And I have no challenge delegating. I'm a master delegator in the sense more more so because I'm lazy mm. <laughs> than a judge of my abilities. But I find that to be a good skill that I have is be able to um, detach myself. Because the outcomes when you delegate something, let's yeah. say let's say something doesn't fall in your ability, you have a few options. Don't do it. Give it to someone else mm-hmm. to do it. Uh, that someone else may not have your vision, your circumstances, your background, your expectations. And at the end of the day, they're doing the task. You are building a life. True. It's completely different. You're not always there. So the I don't have the see the difference between Alina and I, and she'll be listening to this, is I'm not attached to the outcome once I delegate. Mm, get it. 80% maybe, 70% is good for me. For Alina, it's frustration. Why is it not exactly like how I would do it? Should I just do it going forward? Hardwiring. Yeah. I don't want to sound gender, Yeah. but gen- at least my limited experience, mm. men macro-manage to the extreme mm. and the opposite gender micromanages to the other extreme. Mm. It's so true though, in my experience yes. at least, yeah. That's That's been the case. Yeah. Uh, we need to find the balance, but which is, again, you need to align roles yeah. in natures, right? I mean, you need, so people, roles which require micromanaging, mm. there are not that every role can is a macromanagement role. Mm. Roles which require micromanage, I mean, they excel beyond belief. Yeah. So real success happens when everyone cracks their chemistry with life and work. Yeah. I think that's where, I think if you, this is thought capitalism. When you mm. put thought into it, it's not about putting people or money into that situation. Yeah. It's about putting thought into it. Just realigning the blocks can do wonders for you. Absolutely. I agree. Like now now it's making sense to me, like throughout this conversation, what you meant by thought capitalism. It's a way to leverage the output through the right oh, yes. application of right thought. Right insights. And um, I mean, insight plus resources is by far the most potent output you will get. Yeah. Um, and being true to your own abilities while having the attention. Sorry, that one is like a big one for me now. Because it's, uh, I'm having an unblock right on camera, which is great. <laughs> um, I guess one of the other places you do these unblocks for other people is teaching, right? You're, um, for those of you who don't know, over 300 seminars, authored more than 15 books. How many of those are textbooks? Effectively everyone. Dude, how? Why? What's going on? Where? Where is this teaching? We haven't even talked about this teaching side no, of you. No, so what's uh, What's happening on that side of your life? I mean, teaching was so fulfilling in life. I used to teach. I literally pro bono. It used to be morning six fifteen to eight thirty, for almost fifteen sixteen years I've done that, and then twenty sixteen I shut because my traveling schedules were too punishing. Mm. Otherwise, Sundays only be four or five hour lectures and then family life was going for a toss. Kids were growing <laughs> up. And my wife was like, she's getting fed up. Yeah. But that's how I still write. And now, and then I started teaching my kids. So I used to share life experiences with them. Mm-hmm. And that was, it was brilliant. But I used to have similar conversations with my daughter when she was five years old. And the bedtime stories used to be a phenomenal bonding as well as a learning time more for me than for them yeah because when, when you teach you actually when learn. you share you learn yeah and you're compelled to articulate to make sure a five-year-old and a three-year-old understands it simple so it was i enjoy it and then um yes when i started traveling a lot more last year and i really missed spending that time my, my kids used to call me we used to have these sessions over zoom um I used to write down on my phone notes about every interesting conversation or person I met. And then that used to be the nighttime conversation. And so then I started writing a blog. Then I took to LinkedIn to do, do this. One of a couple of my colleagues at work said, why don't you do it for the people at large? Then the last one month I've been doing it on LinkedIn, not more. Mm. Finding it very interesting. I've been enjoying your posts. Thank you. As I was, we started talking first to schedule this around November, I think. Yes. So I've been following those. Uh, I was following it from de- no, December first week. Yeah. Yes. So 
right it's been it's it's nice to share because my larger ambition once we finish the first milestone is i want to build a series of universities in india mm. and i want to bring davos to india mm. that's the oh, some of your north stars oh absolutely because i want to the the largest tracts of human population are not represented they're not even in the security council for what joy mm. sort of fear fear is good when it's in, fr- in front of you not inside you so now we are fearless as a nation yeah and i also want to s- s- build a series of bookstores in india similar to barnes and noble mm-hmm. i mean this incident happened in dc a uh, couple of years back uh, i love to go to dc because there's so much of intellectual depth there and the institutions have built i mean it's it's fascinating one mm-hmm. thing which i love about americans is the depth of thought yeah they have about i mean because since it currently it's a technically a military state mm-hmm. so they the amount of investment they spend on human psyche understanding the psychology because that's what they they effectively win a, a, psych, a psychological otherwise why should there be any value for dollar yeah currency backed by nothing <laughs> including the piece of paper on which it is printed nowadays yeah so there i met this gentleman i went to the store and i asked a gentleman called anthony i still remember him very very well i asked him i want to r- buy books which will help me understand america's world view this was a mandate i gave yeah he said come with me so he t- took me to a place f- for american history yeah picks up searches around next 7 8 minutes and he brings six books mm. it was like 11 a.m in the morning <laughs> and then on a proper working day he said like okay go up there's a nice coffee shop there was starbucks on top go up read mm. and if you like any of these pick up mm. otherwise you can come back and give it to me i'll put it inside mm. 11 a.m i went up i came down by 5 <laughs> had few cups of coffee some sandwiches yeah but enjoyed that time came back returned it and then i bought some three out of that but i was walking back i was reflecting on what actually happened and what was barnes and noble doing they were in selling books they were enlightening the society they were giving access to mm-hmm. intellectual curiosity and en- enlightenment i think that must be the way we should look at bookstores not as commercial ventures mm-hmm. i mean it's easy to say but when someone does it as a livelihood it's a very different perspective which yeah. is why one of my real ambitions is build universities on political economy in india mm. enlighten the population on what it takes to rule imagine a small island ruled one third man one third of mankind sitting out of westminster mm. i mean how is it even possible but they understood what it takes yeah we have such a rich civilization rich history extraordinary culture and civilization we spit yet we still haven't structured the game the way it needs to be to build the next generation of leaders yeah that's the larger uh, purpose let's hope i'm on happen. board man i'm on board like personally like s- similar to you but later on in life around the journey where i had to become from a boy to a man almost overnight my my father got diagnosed with parkinsons and i'm the only son i have three sisters and all responsibilities kind of came on shoulders too far earlier than i predicted um in my early 20s and um parkinsons as a disease takes away different things for different people in his case it was memory ability to hold conversations and uh more neurological than physical the effects on him and before that age in life i think even he was waiting for me to mature so we can have father son conversations so we didn't have a lot of them early in my life um he was busy working for us you know no qualms about that i don't hold regret for him not spending time with uh with myself but around that time books are the things that became my mentors my father figures my 
uncles that I would talk to. Because even growing up in Abu Dhabi, we didn't have uncles and aunts here. They're all based back home. It's just our family here. We didn't have cousins and everything. You know, in your society, you need wisdom. Wisdom usually came from the older generation. Great. The older generation Great. used to do it through stories and True. they'd sit with you and the granddad and the grand. We didn't have that. They All my grandparents passed away before I was born. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. books in that time have held such a high place. True. My mind, my heart. Um, I cannot be caught dead without ever having a book that I'm reading, if not two at the same time. And I don't have to finish them all. True. I don't yeah. force myself. If I'm not enjoying it, I don't finish it. If it's not talking to me, I don't. So, and I've, I don't know where I picked this up from because no one in my family reads mm-hmm. as much. Mm-hmm. They think I'm reading like fiction storybooks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what I'm doing is like exploring mm-hmm. the hell is happening mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. In, in so many different facets. I'm on board with this mission of democratizing knowledge or, or letting people self-reflect explore, explore, themselves. explore self-reflect and then connect with what matters yeah. and then how often do i find myself to your other point uh googling indus valley civilization True. or like exactly. things that have ayurvedic treatment exactly because all that knowledge is there yes it was figured out and like the was, first civilization properties seriously. in our region seriously the first city and it sewage was, systems it was back decim- when decim- what, thousands of years ago yeah like a, a city connected with sewage seriously but some countries can't figure it out now and we had it figured out back then seriously so how often I find myself going back to go forward and to have something like this um, I mean, that this the is, purpose is there be yeah. fantastic I so wish it comes sooner than I mean, 2028 is my that's your frame. target that's to start the game you know what? I'll send a calendar invite oh, for please. us in 2028. Well, first, first bookstore should be there. First bookstore? Yes. Okay, what about the university? Okay, 2032. 2032. So these are two calendar invites that you and I will have in our calendars. Yes. And I'll ask you. I want uh, it to be like, when I pick up a 150-acre piece on a hilltop, oh. I have a private airport for all the dignitaries to fly in. Oh, yes. Build it. It, it would be the Indian version of Davos. I love or it. Davos would be our, it it was once held there kind yeah. of. Yeah. <laughs> this is a years. better version yeah. of it. So, I love it, man. Listen, we're coming off to closing. I'm, I'm sure. having a look at all the things I still wanted to discuss. I think I'll have to bring you back because um, there's so many interesting, uh, like even you talking about building uh, or using your business as a laboratory, ideating experiment. I'm looking for mental models around that, but can't discuss that right now. We didn't even talk about EO that much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, EO. Um, well, that's I wanted what brought to us to together. About, I know. And I think this is going to be very useful to everyone that's listening. If, if I gave you a billboard, and I'm completely stealing this question from my favorite podcaster, but if I gave you a billboard on Sheikh Zayed Road, millions of people passing by, and if you were to put something on there for them to see, what message or what image or what would you put up there? Non-commercial doesn't have to be commercial. Don't have to say anything with DVS, but... Dream fearlessly. I like that. I want that tattooed on me. That would be a great message. Our, one of our taglines is dream big. Our, what I've also learned is emphasize on fearlessness. The big will automatically follow when you are fearless. Yeah. It can only be big. Yeah. That's that's what dreams are made that's, of. Right? That's the nature of dreams. The sabotage what we have are the challenge. So I've learned to realize, I went through a program for that. Mm. You should never reason with your sabotars. Just ignore. We have Even this, if it's yourself. It's, it is always yourself. <laughs> Let's understand that. I love it. You know, realization, like, it's, it's funny how life brings some conversations together. Last night, I wouldn't say I'm right now burnt out. I'm very toasted. And it's not, it's business holiday season, family, friends, and everything. 
And yesterday I was being my own saboteur and completely poo-pooing everything. Just throwing shit at the walls in my own head. And last night I had that realization like, that's not what it is. Everything is fine and okay, still go ahead. You're just tired. You haven't had enough sleep. You're not eating well. They are cons- conspiring against your mind to exactly. make you believe no, no, no. that you're in a mess. Nothing's in a mess. You need a few ni- nights of sleep, a few good meals, and you'll be back. I was complaining to Alina about everything. Mm-hmm. And the problem with a couple-led business sometimes, if you're both in the same phase, we're not always together in the same get phase. It, get it, get it. It compounds. True. Because then Ooh, the other person would vent. Then you would vent. And then everything is just spiraling. Yes, 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 yes. It's lovely when both of us are on a high because uh-huh. we just compound yes, that too. Yes, yes, I love that too. And it's lovely when one of us is low, one of us is high. We, but yesterday we were both there. So this morning I woke up, I told her, listen, whatever I was saying yesterday, it wasn't me. I was taken <laughs> over. I was. I had some atma in me, like someone uh, was inside uh, me. Uh, uh. It wasn't me. Forget everything because I'm trying to forget everything mm-hmm. that I said. And now coming here and listening to you um, enlighten me or... Help me self-reflect through this conversation. Don't use big words. It's because you are ready. The message found you. I was Mm -hmm. only a conduit for that. Thank you for that. Thank you for being a conduit. Um, Any final words for our audience before we call this to a close? I mean, dream big. Nothing else. Nothing else matters. Yeah. In life. I think that's just, and go for it. That that's all. I mean, life is wonderful. Mm. Regrets don't find place. They have no place in your life. Just go for it. And safety is the biggest BS. <laughs> don't even fall prey to it. <laughs> if someone has to ever feel that way, that's it. I'm gonna go buy a new car today. <laughs> Please do that. <laughs> Please, if it yeah. helps you reinforce yourself go to it there's a lot of sense in that i think there's a lot of sense i've and this is not just you saying it now that i've experienced it before you need to put that into practice more often oh, more intentionally seriously. seriously i mean i mean yeah universal truths are so simple you just have to knowing is one thing believing is another one mm. i mean when you believe you become Again, yeah, and it's fantastic what it can do to you. I um, I'm remembering something I heard. I guess my last point I make before we close. Tony Robbins made this famous, I think, and he probably picked it up from somewhere. Um, state, story, strategy. So in that order. So he was saying that when you're in a funk, when you're saboteuring yourself, you are you come up with a strategy to get out of your shithole, whatever that shithole you might be in. He says, instead, you need to change your state first, whatever that means for you. So that could mean a cold shower, it could mean a new car, it could mean a new apartment, new whatever, change the state. That will change your story and self-belief that you tell yourself. Based on this new story, you apply the strategy, which is to do, versus going from funk to strategy, which is what people usually do. No. So that's why I believe what you're saying, like that change of state. Just ignore. Yeah. Those voices don't find any place in your life. Yeah. They're not real. They really aren't. They aren't. They aren't. Don't allow them to sabotage your life. Yeah. It, the simple rules of life are, they're actually very simple. Yeah. Right? You just have to remind, remind, remind till it becomes hardwired. Then it becomes us. Yeah. We we don't have time. I had a lovely chat with a monk last month. I mean, fascinating. Maybe uh, on a I'd different occasion. That. We'll uh, chat yeah. on that. Yes, yes. I will, I will bring that up. You better be ready with that story because <laughs> I want to hear all about it. But thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you. Thank you. for Thanks for having me over. Pleasure. Thanks so thank much you. for that.